Hello guys, and this is the last part of lesson 2. We will have limits of radical functions. Let's define first a radical function. So for our scenario, a radical function contains a radical expression with independent variable, usually the variable x in the radicand. Okay, so this is our function and this is our radical function. Okay, so we have the nth, the positive negative nth root of g of x. So remember that n is a positive integer. When we talk about integer, it can never be fraction. Okay, so this should be a whole number here. Uh, and g of x is either a polynomial or a rational expression. We have discussed these two in the last parts. Okay, so uh, aside from that, integer, uh, positive integer, that uh, it does not include zero so there is no zero root of g of x in our case okay so note that whenever n is even uh, like uh, square root fourth root sixth root eighth root the domain should be g of x greater than or equals to zero because if it's less than if g of x is less than uh, zero what will happen it becomes negative, right? So, the uh, our g of x becomes negative. And remember, uh, example, if we have square root of negative 1, if we try it in our calculator, okay, this is our calculator. Let's just try square root of negative 1. Again, negative 1 is less than 0. It's math error for the reason that this is undefined okay this is undefined in our set set of real numbers okay or in simple terms this is undefined okay because this is a complex number again this is already a complex number and we oftentimes say that this is imaginary square root of negative one is imaginary okay so we are not going to discuss about this whenever we have a negative radicand okay whenever g of x is negative we simply say it does not exist already okay just write dna the limit of that kind of function is dna okay we have example 10 let's try limit of the square root of 3x plus 1 all over x squared as x approaches 5 so we simply use our calculator using substitution rule we can compute for the limit okay so square root is here so we have 3 alpha x plus 1 down alpha x squared press calculate and our x is approaching 5 so we have 4 over 5 for this okay so this is 4 over the limit of this function is 4 over 5 okay how about this what will happen well, let's try do, to do it manually for us to see it clearer so using substitution rule we have square root of 3 times negative 5 plus 1 okay and 3 times negative 5 is negative 15 Negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14. And again, whenever this happens, or whenever this happens, square root of negative 14, we simply say that the limit does not exist. Again, no equal sign, ha? Huh? Uh, remember, whenever we write DNA, there should not never be an equal sign. So just put DNA, does not exist. Okay, so let's tweak a little element here. What if it's cube root? Okay, so unlike square root, remember square root a while ago, if this is not 3 here, I, I put 3 here representing cube root. Okay, so remember square root a while ago is an even root. In fact, square root, uh, the, the root of square root here, square root is actually... To the second root okay second root 
okay? Or uh, we don't write this in this form because it's already understandable that it's to the second root. Okay, how about if it's cube root? Let's try using our calculators. Okay, so uh, let's input, sorry, uh, shift cube root, cube root is here. Okay, 3 alpha x plus 1. Calculate. Let's have negative 5. Okay, so that's already, let's just type negative 5. Again. Okay, so if you try to look at this in your calculator, there is an answer. So the reason why there is an answer is because for odd root, Add numbered root like for example 3 5 7 9 the domain of the radical or radical function ra radical function uh, actually is the set of real numbers unlike for the uh, even root functions radical functions the domain depends on whatever is inside this whatever is, where is it? inside of this expression here okay if it's even however 3 is odd so the answer we have the answer here in our calculator negative 2.41 okay so or approximately approximately negative 2.41 okay let's have this example evaluate the limit of square root of 3x plus 1 as x approaches positive infinity. Okay, so it's already infinity. So, let's try to answer this using our observation. So, heuristic. Observation, heuristic. So, 3 times infinity is infinity. And infinity plus 1 is again infinity adding one to uh, adding a number to infinity is just infinity okay so we will have a square root of infinity okay so try to realize that our square root when we talk about our square root here let's try let's try this square root of let's say this number here it will give us a positive answer okay and it's big and it's positive so the reason why the answer is positive it's because our function here okay there's no sign for this function here supposedly this is plus minus because it's square root but in our scenario since we are dealing with uh, ra radical function it's not specified if this is negative or positive we are assuming that the answer is the principal Root. Again, in our scenario, we are assuming that the answer is the principal root. Either we answer D and E, because again, uh, it's infinity, or we, we can answer equals positive infinity. Okay, so there, there are two ways to answer D and E or positive infinity. So we are sure that this is increasing without bounds because square root of a... Uh, a very very big number is still positive infinity we are taking the principal root let's try to graph to see or to prove the to prove the point that it's actually going towards positive infinity so we have f of x equals the square root so we will type sqrt square root of 3x plus 1 okay so observe the graph of this function so the every remember our, the value of x is represented by the horizontal axis or x-axis so if we keep on increasing positive infinity so going to the right so even if we go far very far here we are sure that the graph 
is going towards the right to the positive infinity and not negative infinity. Hence, we are sure that this is the function the function as x approaches positive infinity will give us positive infinity and the limit does not exist or the limit does not exist. And that's it. This is the end of, le of this part, part 5. And in fact, this is also the end of lesson 2. Yay! We have finished already 2 lessons. Okay? So, as an activity, please answer activity number 2. Uh, limits of algebraic functions. So, for the next lesson, lesson number 3, we'll be discussing limits of trigonometric, exponential, and logarithmic functions. So, see you around. Bye-bye.